know that Zoro wasn't supposed to be a member of the Straw Hats? Or that the original concept of Nami had a metal arm? Well, I found 45 secrets you definitely didn't know about the Straw Hats. Like, did you know that Luffy once appeared in Dragon Ball? Back in 2006, the guys who made One Piece and Dragon Ball were getting a little bored, so they did something that had never been done before. They took the two biggest manga in the world and created Cross Epic, a manga collaboration that combined characters from One Piece and from Dragon Ball. And the crossover story is just about the characters in One Piece and Dragon Ball having a huge party. But if you didn't pay close enough attention while reading it, you might have missed this critical scene. Luffy is riding the Nimbus Cloud, something that only the pure of heart can do. Dang, Luffy might be a pirate, but he's still a good guy. Look, his heart might be pure, but something that beats even that is his style. Cause Luffy is so fashionable that he's the first anime character ever to appear in a fashion magazine. No No had been posting men's fashion for the last 20 years and things were getting old. So in 2009, Luffy was featured on the cover of the magazine and he definitely dressed for the occasion. Dude's looking snazzy. But for number three, we have to talk about Luffy's voice actor. Cause in both the English and Japanese dubs, Luffy is voiced by a woman. When Toei Animation was first hiring people for One Piece, they immediately ran into one major problem. See, Oda had already released a hundred chapters and he didn't plan to stop anytime soon. Toei realized that if they hired a young man to voice Luffy, the actor's voice would eventually get, get too deep. So they made the decision to hire female voice actors for Luffy. Now that's just crazy, but not as insane as Luffy's anger issues. Cause even though he's pure of heart, Luffy never shows mercy to his opponents. You probably think he doesn't like killing his enemies, but Oda actually explained the horrible truth. Luffy's only goal is to achieve his dream. And because of this, the worst thing he can do to an enemy isn't killing them. Oh no, he literally tries to crush their dreams. And speaking of dreams, we all know Luffy wants to be the Pirate King, but what's the real reason behind this goal? Well, Luffy wants to be free. He believes that the Pirate King is the most free person in the world. But the funny part is that Luffy is already doing whatever he wants. He's going on adventures and hanging out with his friends. But enough about Luffy. Let me drop some of his crazy family secrets. His grandfather Garp and father Dragon are his only known biological family. Both his mom and grandma have never been mentioned. There is a fan theory that this guy is his mom, but I give it a 1% probability. While Luffy doesn't have much family, he treats his crew like a family, but in a very subtle way. See, he gives everybody he meets a nickname, but not his crew. One example of this is Marco. Luffy doesn't call him Marco, but instead Pineapple Head. And he's never given his crew nicknames because once you're part of his family, he remembers your name out of respect. But here's the thing, Luffy's just one of the 10 different Straw Hat members. And some of the facts I discovered about the other Straw Hats, like Zoro, Nami, and Sanji are just ridiculous. And we have to start out with a weird spelling mistake in Zoro's name. If you've ever watched the show, you've probably seen his name spelled as Zolo sometimes. And this actually isn't a mistake. It's caused by a bizarre quirk in the Japanese language. You see the letters L and R are treated the same in Japanese. But what's even more interesting is the four kids dub went with Zolo because they didn't want to get any copyright trouble from another fictional character called Zoro. And Zoro's first name has its own big secret. Roronoa is the Japanese pronunciation of Lolone, who was a French pirate in the 17th century. This makes him the only member of the crew who's named after a real life pirate. But Zoro's name doesn't matter much to Sanji, who often refers to Zoro as a moss head because of his green hair. These two are constantly at each other's throats and always come up with childish nicknames for each other. Their feud has reached such a point that in all 1000 episodes, Zoro has never called Sanji by his real name. The beef is real. Listen, Zoro's insulting nicknames for Sanji are hilarious, but did you know that he originally wasn't supposed to be part of the crew? Zoro's character was actually supposed to be the first mate for Buggy the Clown. And if you look at Zoro's character design today, you could still see how well he could fit in. He's got the right face shape and hair color for it. Could you imagine just how different the series would be if Zoro was just a one-off villain? That's just scary. But it's not as scary as his three sword style. Give the man three swords and he turns into a killing machine. But have you ever wondered how many swords he's gone through? Whatever your guess is, double it. Zoro uses two unnamed swords at the beginning of the show that get broken by Mihawk. He didn't replace these until Logetown where he found Yubashiri and the cursed blade Sandai Kietsu. Sandai Kietsu has survived being owned by Zoro, but the Yubashiri wasn't so lucky. In season nine, the Yubashiri got dissolved by the Marine Captain Shu. I mean, I've seen a sword break, but dissolve? That's a first for me. Adding up a couple other times, Zoro has gone through seven swords. Swordsmiths hate this man. And Zoro almost has as many voice actors as he does swords. He's had two different child actors and then four more for his adult character. He's just running through them. And before we jump into the next Straw Hat's deepest and darkest secrets, I want to share the unsolved mystery about Zoro's scar. Since the beginning of One Piece, Zoro has had a scar that runs through his left eye, but nobody knows what caused it. Lots of fan theories have emerged 
merch, but I honestly think it's a design choice. I mean, he definitely looks super cool with just one eye. But did you know that Nami was supposed to have a bunch of battle scars too? An early draft of her character was found, and you can see her with a robotic arm and leg. She looks completely different. But that's not the only thing that Oda changed about Nami. This tattoo is blue in the anime, but black in every single colored version of the manga. To this day, nobody knows if the actual color is supposed to be blue or black, but that's not as unexpected as the next secret I found about her. See, Nami has always been kind to children. One of the most obvious examples is when she saved the children that an evil villain was experimenting on. Her kindness is a core part of her character, and Oda even said that if Nami wasn't a pirate, she would be a child care worker. But here's an easter egg you definitely missed about her. In chapter 97, Nami tried on two different outfits, and at first glance, nothing seems wrong here. What most people missed is that this one is identical to what Boa Hancock wore when she was first introduced, and the second one is the same outfit that Robin wore when she first showed up in the anime. Either Oda was just lazy and grabbed old designs, or Nami has the ability to predict the clothing of future characters in the show. And speaking of Nami's wardrobe, did you know that every single one of her outfits is inspired by Oda's wife? When he needs to create a new outfit for Nami, he just peeks over at his wife and copies her fit. What's even crazier is that Oda met his wife while she was cosplaying as Nami at an anime convention back in 2002. Make sure you show up at the next anime con and your favorite manga writer just might marry you. Listen, these are some pretty crazy facts, but they only get better. And here's a secret 99% of people definitely don't know. Did you know that the Uso in Usopp means to lie? On top of that, his long nose is a not-so-subtle reference to Pinocchio's. Moreover, his birthday is on April Fool's, the holiday where you prank and lie to other people. He was truly born to be a liar. But he also has a secret talent for scaring people. In one episode, he had to scare this little kid to undo her devil fruit ability. He changed his expression, and it was so scary that the kid passed out. But the face he made actually has a secret meaning. If you look at the entrance to the Goa Gaja cave in Indonesia, you can definitely see some similarities between this face and the one Usopp made. I can't believe they modeled a real place after him. But he has a monument dedicated to him in One Piece too. The island of Skypea has an amusement park called Rubber Band Land, and inside there's a massive statue of Usopp, except he's muscular and holding a spear. During his time on the island, Usopp taught the inhabitants how to use rubber bands in several useful ways. This was apparently enough to warrant putting up a statue of him. Let's talk about Usopp's secret cameo inside of one Piece. When Luffy received his very first wanted poster, Usopp happened to be in the background. This is something that was shared in the show, so it's no big deal. But something most don't know is that he's also in the background of Zoro's wanted poster too. You can see him in the bottom left doing his crocodile impression with a hook hand. Let's be real, Usopp probably bumped up Luffy and Zoro's bounties simply by being in the wanted poster. And that's because he's deadly with his slingshot. But originally, Usopp wasn't supposed to be the crew sniper. It was supposed to be Sanji. See, I found the original design for Sanji, and in it, he was a gunslinger. What's even crazier is that Sanji's name was originally supposed to be Naruto. Oda decided against it because a small manga called Naruto was coming out just around the same time. But there's one thing about Sanji that drove fans crazy for years. His left eye. Before the time skip, Sanji's hair always covered his left eye. People were going nuts trying to figure out if he was missing the eye or if it was a different color. And when they saw this frame in the anime, the fan theories doubled. I'm guessing Oda got tired of people overthinking it, so he decided to switch up Sanji's hair to cover his other eye. What's hilarious is that now people think there's a secret mystery about his right eye. Dang, sometimes anime fans go too far. Sanji's eyes created a lot of drama, but his eyebrows are iconic. And he's not the only character to have eyebrows like this. It actually runs in his family. When Sanji's family was introduced in the anime, I was shocked to see that all of his siblings have the same swirly brows. But during this scene, I realized that Sanji's the only straw hat to have biological siblings. Nami has an adopted sister, and Luffy's brothers are just two guys he's extremely close with. Ironically, Sanji has a horrible relationship with his siblings, even though he's related to them. If this video gets 5,000 subscribers, I'll share the rest of the crazy facts I found. Subscribe!